So welcome everyone to today's webinar. As I said, being hosted from my home as we're all, or most people are now working from home or transitioning to um, a work from home scenario. So today we're gonna to look at Creditor Watch's unique data, helping businesses identify risk. Look, I just wanted to touch on a few things before we get started. The obvious ones, where can I ask questions? Um, there's the opportunity to do that within the Q&A section within your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, we will, of course, be uh, recording the webinar today and then sending out the webinar recording along with the slides to everyone who has registered and attended. Um, and of course, if you want more webinars, please jump onto our website. There's a webinar section with all our previous ones and upcoming ones as well. Um, we've had, a, we've had a, a few people, we've had lots of people obviously ask for today's webinar and, that, and that's really where it's come from. It's great that we've, we've got a, an engaged and active database that, that you know, helps drive the content that we, that we share, that we um, create and today is no different. Plenty of people asking what can we do here? We know it's going to be extremely tough and it's only going to get tougher over the next few months. Seems like, um, you know, for me in particular, taking it a day at a time. We moved everyone to work from home yesterday, kicked the day off with a 9.05 um, all company workout on Zoom. I think we had about 50, 55 people who were all signed in on Zoom with their cameras on working out. Some people just watching and laughing. But I think if you can get active first thing in the morning when you're working from home or you can have a good laugh with or at your colleagues, it's really important. So today's, um, today's webinar has certainly come off the back of um, interest from our database, our customers, our partners. There were a few people out there who um, weren't quite happy with potentially the language we used in the invite around it sounding like we were either fear mongering or trying to take advantage of you know, those who are struggling. That's certainly not the case. Um, you know, we've got the majority of our customers are small businesses and, and they're the ones who are gonna do it toughest. Um, and, and this is about helping, helping our customers and our, our subscribers, our listeners, and providing any sort of tools we can, advice, et cetera. Um, at the end of the day, this is uh, a scenario that has, you know, no one's ever been through before. And I keep saying to people, um, there's no playbook for a game that's never been played before. So, you know, what you do today may not necessarily be right tomorrow, given how dynamic the circumstances are. So a bit about Predator Watch, and I will obviously touch on this quite a bit more. So I will briefly go through this. Um, we are a commercial credit reporting bureau with over 50,000 customers. We have a wide range of products, as you can see there. Um, it keeps growing. I keep adding additional ones in. It's really exciting that we're able to produce, you know, new products, new features on a, on a fairly regular basis. It almost feels like, you know, monthly, quarterly, a, a big new product launch comes out. Um, there's links in all of those, and I will touch on some specific ones that are, you know, really relevant to um, today's webinar and, and, and the, the environment that we find ourselves in or the scenario that we find ourselves in with um, coronavirus. Agenda, so we're gonna look at what our unique data is. We're gonna discuss it. Um, so you guys get an understanding of, you know, where we're getting it and why it is benefit, beneficial and particularly why it is unique. That's probably the key word that you will hear me use a lot today. How to use that data. So we'll look at some real um, scenarios within the Creditor Watch platform and I'll show you some companies where, you know, some important unique data had been lodged over 12 months ago and you can see that that company is now in administration. Um, why it provides a competitive edge and also, of course, looking at identifying risks within your ledger. Um, so there is a, there's a bit to get through today, but I think we should have you um, finished up at about one o'clock if I can time it right. Um, I do apologize for the blurriness of this one. This is my fault uploading it incorrectly. We will get a nice new one done for us, but this is just giving you a quick breakdown of the data sources that we're taking advantage of. And there's a few more as well that we've recently added. So ASIC, of course, Australian Business Register down the bottom right there. 
We've got adverse information and that information is in the form of payment defaults, mercantile inquiries, court actions from around Australia, insolvency notices for anything to do with a, you know, a um, administration, wind up, liquidation, receivership, credit scores, zero and NYOB data that we're pulling data from and corporate age trial balances as well. We also plug into APSA, the bankruptcy database. Um, so that's obviously going to be a, a very important source of data over the next, um, I would say, six to 12 months, as well as that insolvency information, being able to predict um, that something is going, that a, that a company is going into administration or, or, or an individual is headed toward bankruptcy off the back of an administration, for example, is really important. Um, so we know that the, the government has um, relaxed the rules around insolvencies just this week, I'm pretty sure it was, or maybe it was late last week, um, extending extending out um, the time it takes for you know people to have to respond to um, a wind up, for example, um, also relaxing the um, trading insolvent rules for directors, which is extremely important because what we know is most small businesses only have a few weeks of, of cash reserves, maybe a few months, and some of those have certainly already eaten into them if they've had to pay employees out or um, we operate out of the city, Sydney CBD, and we know a lot of the cafe owners that we use have basically uh, Gone, gone belly up overnight. It's, it's really tragic to see, you know, the, the money has just um, disappeared within two weeks. So let's have a look at the um, unique data that is exclusive to Creditor Watch. Now we talk about unique and exclusive, I'll, I'll explain that why I use those two words in a little bit more detail. So 90% of our customers use Creditor Watch exclusively. So as you see here, we've got 50, 000, over 50,000 customers from all states, industries, all sizes, um, utilised by, you know, Credit Watch is used by companies of all sizes, um, from, from sole traders, micro businesses operating out of their home, all the way up to, you know, big four banks, telcos, utilities, biggest companies in Australia. So we have a fantastic spread of customers across all, you know, all spectrum, all, all parts of the spectrum in terms of size and type, um, location, et cetera. But importantly, 90% of those customers that use Creditor Watch use us exclusively. And we know that because we've polled them before, we're regularly talking to people. Um, and, and as a result of that, the data that they are providing, that you are providing to our bureau, be it in the form of Credit inquiries, payment defaults, et cetera, is unique, makes it unique to Creditor Watch. So stated simply at the bottom there, Creditor Watch data is simply not available anywhere else. So that's what makes it unique, that's what makes it exclusive, and that's what makes it so powerful and is the big reason why Creditor Watch um, has grown so well over the last 10 years. So specifically looking at SME data, right? When Creditor Watch, when 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 we started ten years ago, there was myself, Colin Porter, and Dale Hurley. Um, we thought to ourselves, well, let's there's a million small businesses out there, give or take. Let's create an offering for them, make it easy for them to use and access important credit risk information, corporate company information. Who are the directors? Are they paying their bills, etc. Let's go after the small businesses. So that's really where we started. And over the years, um, larger organisations have come to us and said, hey, we want access to your, your, your credit reports, your credit scores, your data that you've got there because it's not available elsewhere. So as a result of that, while we started in the small business space, we now have customers from all, um, all sizes of the, uh, of the business, of the corporate spectrum, you know, right up to the biggest ones in Australia. But back to... Um, the power of SME data, 90% of Australian businesses round about again are SMEs re representing the biggest source of credit risk data available out there. Uh, credit Watch is the only bureau utilised by small and medium businesses. And when we talk about an SME, why are they important? They're important because typically they are a non-critical supplier. And now when I say non-critical supplier, that means they are most likely to experience a slow payment from a debtor or a default from a debtor 
because that debtor knows that, okay, I've got five invoices to pay. I'm gonna pay you know, my loan, I'm gonna pay my landlord, I'm gonna pay um, my, tel my telco because I need the telecommunications system, my internet to run my business. Larger critical, larger businesses are typical those typically those critical suppliers, right? A critical suppliers that a debtor that's headed towards administration cannot afford not to pay. They have to pay those critical suppliers, otherwise they will be out of business tomorrow, right? So it is SMEs who are typically non-critical suppliers, means they are the ones whose invoices get pushed to the side. They are the ones that incur the payment default um, from a debtor first. And as a result of that, they can provide early warnings that a debtor is headed towards delinquency, is headed towards administration, is starting to slow their payments. So if you're using Creditor Watch, you get access to that. If you're not using Creditor Watch, you're missing out on those early warning signs. So what data is unique exactly? So payment defaults are obviously the biggest, most powerful one that is being lodged by our customers when their debtors owe them money. All right, they get registered on the Bureau. If you're monitoring that particular debtor that has a payment default registered against them, you will receive an email alert. If you perform a credit check on a, on a, on a company, on a debtor that you're either dealing with or looking to get into business with, you will see that payment default on their credit report. Very powerful. Trade payment information. So Creditor Watch is the only Bureau that integrates with Xero and MYOB. So as a result of that, we're able to pull important trade receivables information, age receivables information on a, on a five minute cycle. Okay, we're, we're also pushing information direct to our customers who utilize those two accounting software providers so that they're able to better manage their, their debtors almost in real time. We're also collecting age trial balances from larger organizations who don't utilize those, you know, typically small business accounting software providers and they're submitting their age trial balance on a monthly basis, sometimes fortnightly. And that information obviously plays a really key part of um, identifying delinquent or slow paying customers, slow paying debtors that are out there. We've got over 200 debt collectors that utilize Creditor Watch to perform searches. And when they perform a search, they have the ability to leave what we call a mercantile inquiry or a debt collection action. So it's really clear to you when you perform a search on a company that's got a mercantile inquiry or you receive an email alert because you're monitoring them, that there's a debt collector chasing them for an overdue debt. It's a really important piece of information. The only bureau at the moment that plugs into insolvencynotices.gov.au, so it's an ASIC run register separate to ASIC, um, and that will provide all sorts of information around winding up insolvencies, administrations, um, including contact details of administrators, for example. So if a company does go into administration, rather than waiting for the administrator to contact you, either via you know, email or snail mail um, or, or phone, if you're lucky, they do contact you. You can actually get on the front foot, call them straight away, provide them with your proof of debt or flag with them that you've got a PPSR registration and you wanna come and collect your goods as soon as possible. If you're a more critical supplier, it's a good chance for you to say to the administrator, hey, if you can guarantee payment, we can obviously guarantee continued service or, um, uh, or goods, depending on what it is that you're providing. And the last one is ANZIC data. So we're working basically 24 seven to access ANZIC information on companies, businesses in Australia. Um, we're sourcing it from a variety of different locations, but also, um, we have some algorithms out there that go into uh, on, online into the web and scrape the information, pull the information, just locate any sort of industry information that we can. And as a result of that, we're able to, I think we've, we've matched over 900,000 um, businesses, companies to, to an ANZIC industry code. So you can see what industry they're in and obviously knowing what industry they're in, um, particularly in today's scenario um, is really important because some industries are doing a lot tougher than others and any, any way for you to uh, better assess credit risk using that is really important. So what products does that drive? Obviously credit reports, credit scores and payment predictor, cross directorships, director due diligence, debtor logic, portfolio health check, all of these things are, are relying on that data 
um, to come through from these various data sources. So let's jump into Creditor Watch itself and start to have a bit of a look at what this data looks like. Now I'm not doing a full um, you know, presentation here or demo of, of, of the product. There's, we've got plenty of existing customers using us and for those who aren't customers, I ask at the end if you want to be contacted by Creditor Watch, please let us know um, and, and we can obviously organise a time to do, to do a demo, most likely a Zoom demo um, or a video conference. So Creditor Watch, this is your dashboard. You're able to perform a search. You know, you type anything in um, and you're going to start to see, you're going to start to see exactly who you're looking for. All right, hopefully that's what comes up. Use the business name, it'll start to come up with the most relevant match to it or you can use the um, ABN or ACN and it will take you directly to that um, particular company. Now the one that we are looking at here is Verve Construction that I've used as an example. They're in administration. You can see they've got defaults, court actions, critical asset documents, cross directorships. Um, no surprise that we are using them. If we scroll down, we can see that um, they have been struggling. This is the credit score for the last 12 months. You can see that they were, you know, 12 months ago in a, in a high risk credit score category already. You know, if you were able to look at it two years ago, you would have seen that they were heading towards ultimately administration. You can also see that their payment trend was trending upwards to 90 plus days. And ultimately you can see they went into administration, I believe it was in October, October, November. So you can see they were well on their way up. So you've got all of these, um, key bits of information flagging to you that if this was your customer or you were about to look at them, you could see that they're heading south, they're heading for trouble. Court actions being lodged all the way back in June 2018, payment defaults all the way back in September 2017. So this is giving you an almost over two year notification early warning that this company is heading towards rocky waters or ultimately administration. So we know that 50% of uh, companies that incur a default end up in administration within 18 months. Okay, so if you're seeing a default, this is a sizable one, 25K. It's obviously bigger ones here, you can see 96K. Um, if you see a default come through, even if it's small, it's really important to take notice of it because generally it's an early warning that this company is heading towards administration, for example. Another one here, again, plenty of um, adverse information against them, also in administration. We can see they went into administration at a similar time. Um, payments were blowing out to 90 days, between sort of 50 and 90 days for you know 10 months beforehand. Um, again, a raft of payment defaults being lodged back in starting from the start of January last year. So again, a nice nine month buffer to find out that this company was heading towards administration. There was even a mercantile inquiry lodged, um, you know, sort of six months before they did head into administration. Another one here, just showing you their credit score. You can see that they headed south over the last 12 months going into administration in Feb. Court actions building up over time, first one's coming through mid 2019. Payment defaults also coming through in mid 2019. But importantly, what we wanna look at as well is cross directorships. In most of these companies, they've got all of these, they've got other companies that they're a director of where they're starting to incur adverse information. All right, so that's Verb. We can see this particular company, a few other, one failed business here. So all of these things are combining, all this data is being aggregated and combined to show you that this company or its associated companies or the director certainly has some um, history of poor performance, failed or failing businesses, all right? 
The other thing to look at within Creditor Watch, high risk or what we call a um, portfolio health check, which is a little bit more um, comprehensive than this, is being able to see a list of all of your existing customers and the risk that they pose to you today. How many of them are in administration? How many of them have a, you know, a risky credit score? Anything below sort of 450, 500 with Creditor Watch's credit score is, is cause for concern. So Credit Watch can obviously um, wash your existing customer database, even if it's just the active ones, and give you the ability to go, okay, great, what are we going to do with these ones that are a little bit higher risk than others? Which ones are trading well at the moment? And I've got obviously links to all of these things in here for you that you can take advantage of um, once we send the presentation through. So that's a really obviously quick way I'm conscious of time for everyone. It's a quick way for you to see, you know, um, examples of how Creditor Watch data is providing you with not only um, a really important indication that a company is headed towards administration, but it's the it's the the timing of that. It's coming through sort of 12, 18 months, two years before the company goes into administration. So it's giving you a huge amount of runway to go, hey, we need to reduce their credit limit, move them to you know cash on demand or potentially just stop doing business with them at all, call in the debts and, and that's it. So it's all about um, utilizing the data that is out there to take advantage of that and, and, and use it to your use it to your advantage, sorry. Um, slow paying clients not on our watch is a campaign that, that we we are running at the moment out there. Um, the next thing to look at here, however, is what we talk about at Creditor Watch is the road to insolvency, the road to administration. What we see along that road are key indicators. What I've shown you in a credit report there, if you're monitoring any of those companies, you're gonna be receiving those alerts. You're gonna be receiving email alerts as those um, bits of adverse events, adverse information take place and are registered against that particular credit file. So it's really important to be monitoring all of your debtors and also performing credit checks on um, new customers that you are considering bringing on or that you're considering, um, you know, potentially increasing their credit list limits or um, potentially going the other way with a credit limit. As I touched on before, small businesses are often the first to not get paid by debtors as their services aren't deemed as critical to day-to-day -day operations. Their payment data and the defaults that they ultimately end up sharing serve as a warning sign that a debtor is experiencing cash flow problems and headed down the road to insolvency. So I've got a um, fairly busy looking infographic here that I won't go through. However, what we're looking at here is very similar to what we looked at on the credit report. It's picking up those signs along the way that a debtor is headed towards insolvency. Some smaller payment defaults, they're slowing their payments, a couple more payment defaults, maybe a debt collection action, court action, et cetera. And then we start to see obviously the insolvency um, notices come through as they're wound up and go into administration. So tips to identify risks and avoid them. Now is the perfect time to be reassessing your whole ledger to identify or at least put companies, customers into buckets. Those that have failed, those that are failing, those that are high risk and those that you are happy trading with as is at the moment. Okay, it's a fairly simple exercise to go through. Beware of Phoenix activity. Now we have had these changes. Um, by the government around you know, insolvencies, administrations, which is fantastic. Business owners, businesses need those in place. The economy needs them in place. We need to be able to nurse companies through the next you know, three, six, maybe it'll be longer than that, months, once everyone can start um, working from the office, getting out there, buying their coffees and sandwiches, you know, going into office works, et cetera, those sort of things that we, we probably took for granted up until a week or so ago. We need to nurse companies through. So those, um, those changes to the insolvency legislation is certainly going to assist with that. Um, however, we still need to be aware and on the lookout for Phoenix activity. We know that post GFC, um, it was it was rife both in the legal and illegal sense of um, of Phoenix activity. 
in terms of companies, customers that you're dealing with, pick up the phone. Um, it's time to be personal. Um, it's time to have a conversation. Can you support that customer in, in any way? Um, can you get some more information that, that puts you at ease? Um, do you have to have that conversation with them to say, hey, we're actually moving you to COD at the moment? Um, or as we're hearing a lot, basically companies are just halving credit limits. We've uh, spoken to plenty of customers over the last few weeks who have been sharing obviously their tips, but also um, you know seeking advice. And I think the first thing, the easy thing to do was you know halve everyone's credit limit, start getting um, overdue payments in as quickly as possible, managing your receivables, you know, trying to keep everything under that you know 15 day mark. Not easy, you know. Most people are. Um, doing the same thing, you know, most people are trying to collect rather than pay. Uh, but if you can do that as quickly as possible, you're obviously going to set yourself up to be in a better position to come out of this. Products to use, a quick um, sort of summary here, obviously Creditor Watch for your normal credit reports and monitoring and alerts, really important. Data Logic, um, that is a, a, a product that you either upload, you, sorry, you do upload your age trial balance and we assist you with that. And what we can do is um, the product itself will review your, your ledger, your age trial balance, and it will identify um, debtors in particular that are paying other suppliers slowly. They might not be paying you slowly, but they are paying other suppliers slowly. So it's a really key indicator um, of delinquency of oncoming administration cash flow problems. Really simple, single upload, or we can upload, you know, the last six months, 12 months, and you start to get a much better understanding of how your debtors are paying you, but also paying everyone else as well. PPSR Logic, um, most of you would be familiar with this, I hope, gives you the ability to register security interests in the event of administration. This is gonna be extremely important um, over the next six months, it's important. Um, you know, in normal day-to-day -day times, um, going pre-corona, pre-COVID, but extremely important now is what we'll see is companies will go into administration um, due to their cash flow issues rather than a creditor wind-up, for example, um, and they are likely to be, um, you know, your goods sitting around, et cetera. Um, anything you can do to protect yourself with a, with a simple, you know, seven-year registration, I would certainly be taking advantage of this um, as soon as possible. Financial risk assessments, um, for your larger suppliers um, and or debtors or partners that you're reliant on, trading partners we call them, financial risk assessment will assess the viability of them using their financials, regardless of whether they lodge them with ASIC or they can provide them to you. We'll have a CA, CPA, um, assess that particular entity based on the financials for the last two or three years. It's a really powerful um, tool to use in order to assess, um, you know, your, your most important trading partners, be it as suppliers or customers. And the last one here is Portfolio Health Check, something that we've, um, I did a, a webinar on only a couple of weeks ago and we've, we've sent out a, a, an email about this as well and, and, and some articles. This essentially allows you to perform a comprehensive review of your database. We can append credit scores so you can start to understand which of your customers are in sitting in which buckets, you know, high, low, medium risk. Um, we can append, you know, the status of those companies, which ones are in administration, which ones are registered, which ones have payment defaults, court actions, et cetera. And zip codes can be appended. There's, there's a whole bit of information that can, basically any bit of data that, that, that's coming into the Credit Watch Bureau, we can append against each one of your customers and you can obviously utilize that to better manage your credit risk. Again, you can click on all of these. They're linked straight through to those pages that I sort of briefly showed before. Do have an article out there on coronavirus and economic uncertainty, so please head to the blog. Um, and just a, a bit of a, a, a my data statement almost that, that I use and have used for, for a number of years now. Um, from a data perspective, the scenario has always been really simple in our minds, even from sort of day one when we got started. More customers equals more data. More data equals more customers. The most customers equals the most data. 
Credit Watch has more commercial customers in Australia than our competitors combined. They come in all shapes and sizes, from the biggest to the smallest, across all parts of Australia, and they represent every single industry. Um, relying on data solely supplied by the biggest companies in Australia um, can be a, a dangerous, um, flawed methodology, as they are critical suppliers, have dedicated teams, ensuring that they get paid faster than other suppliers. It is really important to understand how a company pays their bills, not just how they pay their biggest their biggest suppliers, but how are they paying their smaller suppliers as well? Because when we look at that, we start to get those early warning indicators that they're having cash flow issues or they're stopping payments to smaller people. So as I said before, um, a quick poll question here. If you are interested in hearing more from Creditor Watch, I will get this up. Would you like to be contacted by Creditor Watch? Yes or no? Um, no, it's fine, obviously, don't be shy. It's a great way to just educate yourself today, perform your own due diligence further on, or reach out to your account manager if that's what you want to do. However, if you do want to be um, contacted, if you've got questions, you want advice, we will try to help out in any way that we can. All right, looks like most of you have voted, so I will give it another 10 seconds and then I'll close this up. Obviously, if you don't get a chance to vote for whatever reason, you can always jump on the website, contact us, and we will be in contact. Thank you for that. Um, as I said, we would get there at about one o'clock. I'm a little bit over. Um, hopefully I've given you some information to, to take into consideration, to start to utilise, to reach out to us, um, or you just shouldn't jump on the website and get a little bit more information. Or even if you're an existing Credit Watch customer, potentially there were certain things in there that you weren't taking advantage of. So please um, do reach out if you, uh, if you have any questions. Stay obviously healthy and sanitised, and if you're working from home, you know, um, don't underestimate the, imports, the importance of um, physical and mental health while we're all cooped up. We will likely do a, um, a bit of a, a mental health webinar in the next couple of weeks as well with tips and tricks from working from home, things to consider, the importance of reaching out to you know, friends and colleagues, uh, important time to be good to one another and look out for one another. So please stay safe out there. Um, and. I look forward to speaking to you in the future. All the best.